Okay, tonight's video is going to be on the provocations we can do from Kodum Estreta using a sword, in this case a very short sword, and cloak. Uh, there's only four, four and a half of these, so this will be a very sh fairly short video, there's a lot kind of going on here. Uh, but one nice thing is that a lot of these are things we've already seen in multiple situations. Sword dagger, sword by itself. So the first couple here is three de punta de versa. Uh, I'm interpreting this as three different actions being from the same thing. We could see the third option as being a second one. It's a little bit unclear, but I think using it as one C is the, the correct interpretation. So part one is we're going to thrust, and what we're dealing with here is they're going to be pushing up using their true edge. So we're going to help them out, dropping their tip underneath and thrusting to their chest. So we're here, thrust to the face, their sword comes up, we help them out, pushing to their high outside, and put the rest to the chest. If, however, they respond with this false edge, preventing us from going around, we're going to change our target to their leg. So we come in and Leave that also to the thigh instead. So it's thrust, cut leg, get out of the way. Now, the third option, and this is what I consider as being part of the continuum, is, as I was going to have a fourth option even, is that I'm going to, I can always still do the mandrina to the head, that tondo. But here I'm going to feint that tondo and do a reversal either high, which he seems to imply because he gives you the response to that, or low, which is what he describes. So it's either going to be faint this, cut high, and we see this in the mezzospada section, it's uh, plane number two, or go low, hitting the thigh with a levato sotondo. Play number two, this is right on sword daggers, we're going to do stramazzoni to the sword hand. Trying to elicit some sort of response. They're going to need to move their hand or it's going to get seriously injured. Three, we're going to go for the other hand. So we're going to kind of harass the left hand with either mandrito or espocata. Uh, depending on how thick this is, cut may not do a whole lot, but it'll definitely encourage them to move their left hand out of the way, and that's what I want. It's for them to get out of guard, hopefully in a way that is advantageous for me. Finally, we get to the last play, which is a feint followed by a casting of the cloak. So we're going to give a look out at the center, and this, of course, is assuming that they have opened up somewhat. If they're very, very tight, this is not going to happen. So if they do have that opening at the center, we thrust, and they're going. The assumption is they're going to do this defense. So the true edge, and then they will thrust us. So we thrust at the center, we're gonna take that energy, step to their side, and either cut to the head, or thrust over top. So that is this, or that. Now specifically here it says that as I'm doing this step, I'm actually going to suppress their arm, the right arm, with my cloak. So I'm going to drape it over their right arm. And we're going to do that by number one, bringing it over and turning my hand clockwise so some of the cloak comes unfurled over top of their arm. Option two, and this is the slightly more difficult option, is that as I do this, we're going to Cast the cloak forward, and as we're doing that, either thrust 
or cut the leg with a mandrito. Uh, so he always describes the casting as of bringing the hand back and throwing it over my left shoulder. So we come up and I cut with a mandrito or we thrust with a stoccata and why not do both if you're able to. So it gives us four um, basic provocations, the Punta Versa Suite, the Stramazzo of the Hand, Harassing Left Hand with Cut of Thrust, and the Faint and Cast, uh, Faint followed by the Casting of the Cloak to either the Arm or the Face. Next video we'll look at the responses to these and how some of them are quite easy to do.